sweaty knees, weak arms are heavy. There's vomit on his sweater already, mom's spaghetti. He's nervous, but on the surface he looks calm and ready to drop bombs. But he keeps on forgetting what he wrote down. The whole crowd goes so loud. He opens his mouth, but the words won't come out. He's joking now, everybody's joking now. The clock's run out, time's up. My next guest rose to international stardom back in 2015 when she turned all the four chairs of The Voice. She's an award-winning West End performer. She was leading lady in Hairspray on the West End. Now she's turned her talents to the studio to produce a wonderful album, Now Then. It's a soul jazz type album. Fem Belling is back with us this year, and it's uh, going to be great to talk to her about this new album too. Fem, nice to have you back on the radio. Hello, Lee. It's so wonderful to be back with you. How are you? Yeah, you too. Well, thank you. Yes, we had you about 12 months ago, I think now. Almost, almost to the day. I was looking it up, I was looking it up in my diary, and I was like, oh, I have... I remember standing outside rehearsals um, for Crossroads almost the day last year. Yeah, you're down at Chapel off Chapel. Mm. That's right. Mm. <laughs> I remember it well. So, yes, almost the day. I think it was about one week difference from memory. Yeah, isn't yeah. that amazing? It is, it is. And here you are now with this wonderful CD. I've looked on YouTube and, uh, and seen you rehearsing all of these with John Fordham and getting all this stuff with you guys going there. You're absolutely brilliant. What a talent. Oh, I've had the most amazing amount of fun working on this project. I, I had this idea in my head. You know, I kept hearing pop songs and obviously because my, my tendencies lie with jazz and, and, and you, know, you know, the beautiful vintage music. I had just keep, kept hearing them being portrayed in a different way and, and reinterpreted. And, um, and, I, and as they started to come, I was like, I've got to do this album. And I, I approached John Foreman yeah. and I said, I went to him with this mad idea. I was like, I've got this idea. And he went, I love it. Let's do it. <laughs> and all of a sudden, we, we, we created, you know, something where there wasn't anything before. And I'm, I'm, I'm so proud of this, of this wonderful thing. Um, well, it's, it's absolutely sensational. It's just full of, I described it as being soul jazz. Is that, that a good description for you? Well, I've, no one really knows where to put it because, you know, I, I, I sing soul, soul songs. I sing jazz mm, songs. I sing mm. pop songs. So I've come up with a, I've come up with a, a little um, thing called vintage pop. Vintage pop. Well, there you are. I like it. I like it. I like it. That's a whole new genre, vintage pop. I've written exactly. that down there. Good. And I'm the only person in it. <laughs> <laughs> Look it up in the uh, the Google and you'll find vintage pop there with my guest, Fem right, Belling. Fem Belling. Fem Belling. Tell us about the tracks. Uh, being Time. Um, uh, not Being Time. What's it called now then? Um, tell me about the tracks on it. Okay, so the, initially the track that really instigated this entire thing mm. was Eminem's Lose Yourself. Um, it's a rap, you know, um, it's one of his iconic raps, and I just kept hearing this Dixieland beat yeah. in there, you know. To, to, and and the, minute, the minute we got it on its feet, I was like, yes, this is it. So that inspired, it's basically Ella Fitzgerald meets Eminem. Yeah. Um, I've got Beyonce's Single Ladies, which is such a great, fun, fun tune, and I... I've made it like a, a good old fashioned Gene Krupa, you know, sing, sing, sing style thing with the, with the toms going do, 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 do. And um, I've turned that, I've taken a Bob Marley song and I've done a beautiful track with uh, the amazing Rowan Brown on um, tap shoes, uh, Chris Vizard on trombone and voice. So it's just the three of us. Beautiful, really acoustic reinterpretation of that. I've taken Maroon 5's um, uh, huge hit. Uh, and I've, I've turned, I've turned their, their huge hit into a sort of like a salsa, um, sort of faux Latin kind of, kind of thing. Um, just some really fun tunes that I think everyone can relate to. I really feel like, um, jazz needs to be reinvented, um, with it, with a voice towards, you know, the new generation that's coming out. You know, back in the day, jazz musicians were playing all the pop songs of the day and they were reinterpreting them in, in their jazz styles. And, and I want to do that now and I want, to, I want to introduce a younger generation to the world of jazz. Mm, in your vintage pop. That's right. Sorry, vintage pop, correct. <laughs> That's vintage, jazz, pop. vintage pop. <laughs> <laughs> jazz is out the door, vintage pop is in. Is in. That's right. You know, I, I really feel passionately that we have to... Um, inspired a, a younger generation, you know, my generation of people to start listening to jazz and, and, and maybe step away from perhaps the, the completely electronic style of things and, yes. and, and just go back to a time where music was made by, by musicians and, and enjoy that style of, of swing. Fem, I couldn't agree more. Couldn't yeah. agree more. That, that, that's you know, exactly that, that, what we're going to do. 
everyone's wearing vintage clothes for driving vintage cars. You know, it's very cool to have a, an old car. Why not listen to that, that old vintage music? Mm-hmm. Well, as I often say, and I said earlier today to another guest, uh, you know, the, these songs mean something. There's, there's words there that you can have interpreted correctly. And you, know, you do get a bit of a message from them when you're listening. Absolutely. In fact, a really interesting creative thing that happened during this project, uh, Lee, was taking a song that perhaps was, was well known out there. Um, I, I did, I did, you know, let, let's, let's take, for instance, I did Let's Get Physical by Olivia Newton-John. Yep. And that's been, you know, such a wonderful, great song. And I slowed it right down and made it into a sort of um, a New Orleans saloon, 1930s style jazz. And all of a sudden the words started to take on a very different different meaning. And, you know, mm. they weren't just... And I, 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 I realized that there's so much meaning inside the songs. And just because we listen to them in a certain way, perhaps we don't get that... That version. I, I think if you slow that down like you've done and uh, you get that sort of a swing to it, you'd have a very sensual song, thinking of those words. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. Um, and it, it quite, um, you know, obviously the tongue-in-cheek uh, music video that she's done is just so wonderful. When you slow it down, all of a sudden it starts to become a, um, a, a plea for someone to, you know, like, oh, I really fancy you. It just really takes on a yeah. different, different character. Yes, I've got the words in my head here now, and, and I'm just imagining what you've done with that, and I can <laughs> uh, I can sort of get the, the drift of what you're saying. Yeah, it, it is a different character totally. It really is. You've been such a busy lady since uh, we last spoke. You've been on the stage. You've done everything here, there, and everywhere. The Port Ferry Festival, I think that's uh, where you've been to, isn't it? Just So that's right. I just finished the Port Ferry Folk Festival. Yeah. And what, a, what a ride that was. That was a good one? Playing to thousands of people, and we... We, we only got rained out on one day, which I think is, is fantastic. That's you know, not bad. The festival's all about mud. But <laughs> and, and the response I got was so wonderful. People are really um, enjoying the music that I make. And, you know, as an artist, you can't ask for anything more. Fem, when you were on The Voice and you had yep. those four chairs all turn around, how did you feel? Well, can, can, I, can I be totally frank with you? Yeah. I was... I was absolutely astounded, not because I don't believe that I'm, I am believe in myself, but I was astounded that all of those four chairs turned for jazz. You know, I, I, I scattered, which can be a little bit alienating sometimes. You know, people, if, they, if they're not used to jazz or they're not used to that genre, they can sometimes go, oh, I'm not sure of the doobie-doo stuff. And, and they all turned. I was absolutely flabbergasted that they turned for jazz, and I was really heartwarmed that... They were they that they loved what they heard, not necessarily me as the artist, but that the genre was being represented. Isn't that wonderful? Yes, yeah, so yeah, great. Really, and really I had such, such a fantastic journey on the show. Um, mm. You know, really, really great. And I'm I'm so thrilled that they were they were happy to include jazz in that in that journey. And at that stage, of course, the judges didn't know that you were already a, an artist and a singer, did they? No, of course, they know nothing. It's absolutely, yeah, they know nothing. They turn around and who knows what they get. (laughs) Well, I think it's quite a good show. At least we've got some talent coming out of that. And it's a live show. Well, it's a recorded live show. But it's giving exposure to people who would not normally get it now. Absolutely. And this is something that, you know, I I, I, I would sit on the couch at three in the morning and just be like, we used to have... We used to have variety television shows that's where right. we, you know, we, there'd be platforms for artists to go on, and, that, and that's how a lot of Australian artists came to came to fame. Mm. And now there's nothing, and you know, and I was like, why is there no place for me to go? And either I can, you know, sort of join in on the on the reality television shows, which is basically what the new currency is in terms of exposure, or um, you know, sit at home and moan about it. And I'm so thrilled I I went and did it. I I would have lo- obviously loved to have stayed longer on the show. Of course, I had so much more to give and, and show, but um, I think little steps. Mm, absolutely, little steps, yep. Yeah. I thought you got to continue that sentence there. <laughs> um, the Q Courthouse is where you're going to be performing. Uh, now, the date is the 8th, isn't it? 8th of April? That's right, yeah. So next weekend on Saturday, and this is one of the first opportunities um, that Melbourneites can uh, have to, to see my new album. So it's going to be songs from the new album with a full seven-piece band. Um, and it's a, it's a rip-roaring evening. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. All the songs you'll know. So because I've been doing a lot of touring um, of, of the album launch itself, uh, this is one of the first that I've been back in town, So um, and it's a great venue. So I know tickets are flying off the shelves for this one. Good, good. We'll start at the Q Courthouse, Saturday the 8th, uh, for the album debut there, Now Then. How can we book tickets? I think well, you can you can go onto my website fembelling dot com. Um, mm-hmm. or, all of all of it's on there. I know the Q um, Courthouse website has Bundura Arts 
Um, but yeah, even or, or even on my Facebook page, you can follow me on, on Facebook, and all the details are up there. Fem, I wish you well for that weekend. All the best with your CD. You must try and get hold of your CD to play it here on the radio station. Love oh, to, I'll, love to get I'll hold get of it. I'll send one in. Yeah, yeah. Look, you must. I'll, I'll contact you off here and give you the address and so on, and we'll organise that to go to our library down here. And thanks so much for, you know, just having me on again. It's just so wonderful to chat to you. Well, it's nice to have uh, a talent like yours and support Aussie talent. That really is good. Yeah, beautiful, Lee. Best to you. Have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye to you.